Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Now I've been working on Steve-O all day. Um, you would have seen that in the video that comes before this. Um, but now, we're getting to a time where I'm going to fit the Supertech valve springs. Now, um, they were packed up really nice, but uh, I've had a little look at them. So we're going to be fitting titanium retainers, dual valve springs, and then we've also got some little uh, spring seats as well. Now, why are we going to be fitting these to the cylinder head of Stevo? Well, these are supposed to be the best valve springs money can buy for the Evo 10, so that's why I've gone with them. Ross Bohr, uh, supplied them to me as they do with nearly all of my parts. Um, the reason I'm fitting them to Stevo, we're running more aggressive cams. So the cams might open the valve further, longer, and require it to come in and out faster. Now it's the spring's job to actually pull that valve back in before the piston hits it. I've got parts all over the garage and uh, it's nice to actually hit that halfway point now where the pile of parts is going to start getting smaller, not bigger. So that's something to look forward to for me. Um, you know, it's, a, it's nice to be at that halfway point. Now I've already got a valve spring compressor tool um, from a car I had previously. Um, some of you, quite a lot of you actually, are not aware I once turbocharged a Peugeot 106. That's something so promising. You say it's not properly mapped, yes, yeah, so and he just had a little basic tune from us, so. good idea to build up an inventory of tools because although it's been like four years since I needed that tool it has come in handy today and it means I can get the job done rather than ordering it and waiting around for the parts so I think that's enough talking let's go over to the bench and uh, start fitting these springs to the cylinder head okay so we've time traveled a bit now as you can see the old valve springs and retainers are now out and we've got the new ones in and they're looking really nice so uh, yeah pretty much done now I've got one left here I thought I'd get some nice camera shots and show you just one uh, in real good detail so that's what we're going to do now and it's this one on the end here now the first thing you're going to need is as I showed you earlier a decent valve spring compressor tool um, this is really worth its weight in gold if you're trying to do this job. So as you can see, there's like these semicircles in the top. So the circle on the inside is actually the top of the valve. The two semicircles are the valve retainer wedges, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know what the proper name is. And then the outer circle is actually the spring retainer, which stops the spring um, basically falling out. Um, and it's the spring. The spring actually presses against that outer circle and that's how the valve comes back in once the camshafts pushed it out. Okay so basically we want to push the valve spring retainer down without the valve going down and that will actually allow us to pull those little wedges out and pop the old spring off so that's what we're going to do. Okay so we put the valve spring compressor over the top, the bottom side goes against the valve top side against the spring retainer and like a massive set of mole grips now we're going to pinch together like so now I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up but there's a little ridge on top of that um, valve and that's what those little wedges um, stick in against so magnetic screwdriver now and it comes out like so Put that somewhere safe. Then there's another one down there, but it's pinched against the retainer and the valve. So we just move the um, compressor tool to give it a bit of clearance so we can then remove this. So we put that to one side as well. We then we then release the compressor tool.
out comes the old spring and retainer. Now this is a little spring seat for the internal spring. Obviously from factory they don't come with dual springs. So we put the flat bit on the top. That's what the spring will sit against. It just goes down the hole. Then we can put, you can put them in one by one if you want, but you might as well just put them in together. The small and the big spring. Then the new spring retainer on the top. So we very carefully want to line up this tool against the valve. Then we want to pinch on the bottom of the tool, close it like a set of mall grips, just a big one. Oh, it's quite hard work, but it does close. Then this is the, really the difficult bit. Using this magnetic screwdriver, we've got to put these little shimmy things back in place. Little wedges, I'm going to call them. I'm sticking with wedge. We've got to put them back in. It's a bit difficult with the camera in the way. But I'll do my best. Actually, it's quite difficult anyway. I found, get a bit of clearance on the top side by moving this, wedge the top one in because for some reason this spring compressor doesn't want to sit centre so it works good because you can clamp the top one in like that and then just drop the lower, the lower one in. Okay so as we can see now they're both in, so we've got two options. We can either undo the clamp, which is a bit um, uncontrolled. Same illustration, mole grips, when you undo them under tension, they sort of just pop open without a lot of control. But you can actually, on this particular um, one, you can actually unwind some of the pressure manually at the bottom by turning a thread. So I'll do that and we'll watch those um, wedges sit nice. Here we are, one's popped into the ridge. I can see they're both in position now, so I'm just going to open the clamp. And as easy as that, we've got dual valve springs and titanium retainers. So hopefully you found that video helpful. Uh, it's a little modification. Um, upgrading the valve springs, but a really essential one when pushing big power. You do not want those valves um, doing their own thing. You want them exactly where the camshaft and the variable valve timing tell the valve to be. Um, any valve float, anything like that, um, not worth the risk because it can hit a piston and all this hard work could be for nothing. Now, it's not just a safety upgrade, those springs. Um, you can actually uh, rev the car higher now because the springs are more powerful, they can push the valve back faster, uh, which is actually the limiting thing when it comes to revving an Evo 10 safely. That as well with the balanced comrods and the changed power profile of the upgraded cams and the big turbo, we're really supporting the build to allow it to rev that little bit further. Now I think factory is seven and a half thousand, maybe seven seven, um, and I think Technically, we could run 8,500 RPM, uh, but I don't like to push it too hard. I'll probably run about 8,200 or 8,000. So it really gives us an extra 500 RPM of power band to play with. So yeah, I've actually quite enjoyed fitting those valve springs. And a big thank you once again to Ross Sport. Uh, they are the UK dealer for Supertech valve springs. So if you're after Supertech valve springs in the UK, be sure to contact Ross Sport. The link is in the description. So yeah, consider liking the video, consider subscribing so you get to see what those springs can do when Steve-O's done. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.